We have designed some new welding tables and I wanted to kind of share with you guys a few little tips and tricks on how to get the DXF files to work on a plasma. I originally designed these to work on a laser so they are like you know there's some tolerance built in but definitely not enough for plasma. The idea here is that you can make a few small changes to the settings on your cam when you send it to plasma and get this file to work um, on your table at your shop locally and you don't have to go ahead and get a laser. So um, basically the gist of it is if you go in and uh, change your kerf width from the factory settings for 65 amps is 0 0.065 inches of kerf if you change that to 0 0.03 inches and do your regular old offset climb cut, you're gonna end up with this table right here. And the cool thing about it is with this tolerance already built in, the Build Pro clamps, the 5 8 clamps, um, already work straight off the table. So let me find one right here. And straight off the table, you can get it in. And it's a little sloppier than the laser, but there is enough there to engage this clamp right off the table. So you can change your settings to 0.03 and get this basic um, setup right here. It works, it's functional, everything slips together how it should. But if you want a little bit tighter fit up, you can cut this with your regular offset of, uh, or your regular kerf width of 065. And your tabs and slots will still work but your holes will be undersized on the bottom. So the top of the holes will be perfect um, as your plasma table is basically, but the bevel and plasma makes the bottom of the holes a little too tight. Without further ado, let's start putting this sucker together. First order of business is locate this centerpiece right here. If you notice it's got a little bit of extra slop in there, you know, that's just to be expected with plasma. What we're really interested in though is this face right here being perfectly straight and flat because as long as we draw this top up against this flat straight face we're going to end up with a flat table so the holes aren't a huge deal for most people but flatness is a huge deal for every fabricator everywhere so that's what i'm really trying to see if this table will go flat once we put it all together even off of a plasma all right there's one then you get your other internal piece Two, three, and these two by threes are almost all put together already. That's what's kind of sweet about them. Uh, from here, we've got our side plates. Woo. All right, I'm gonna get another clamp. Now let's see if we can do the same treatment on these guys. All right. That's pretty much it right there. We just need some of these fancy little doodads here. This help us draw everything together. Keep it tight. What is the purpose of this table? Um, this is basically the ultimate fabrication table is the idea behind it. So um, everything you build generally has to be flat and square. You know, there are exceptions to that, but um, flat and straight is pretty much a given in anything you're building. So if you are fabricating something in the air or off of sawhorses or off of the floor, which has not been leveled or shot in, then um, you're basically, your product is only as good as the surface it's built on unless you go to pretty great lengths to get um, basically like a string line out and a strong back 
And there are techniques, you know, to work around it that I learned out in the field, but you don't really want to be doing that um, if you can help it. So, in a shop, everything's supposed to be set up really repeatable. So that means you can do stuff like build a permanent jig table to make everything easier in your shop. The challenge is um, this file, this design is really intended for a laser table which has much tighter tolerances than a plasma does and is capable of giving you basically ready parts right off the machine without much post process or any at all in most cases. But um, everybody's not made of money and plasma is a cheaper process. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make this table design work on a plasma so people that don't have the funds for the laser cut version can still have something super flat in their shop and be able to use it um, for years to come because this sucker is going to last just as long as this laser cut one is down here. But we have to prove that it's going to turn out flat because if this table off the plasma is not flat because of whatever reason then we don't have a very useful tool. So that's what we're doing is trying to prove that concept that you could feasibly take one of these, cut it on a plasma and end up with, for all intents and purposes, the same tool as this laser cut one. So yeah, let's see if we can make it happen. Alrighty. From here, you want to tighten these up. And what this is doing is drawing the top up to the bottom of these gussets or ribs right here. All right. This sucker's a beast, or a pig, or a pig beast. All right, now for a few more clamps. And if you guys can't tell by now, there's never enough clamps. Looks like we might finally be getting somewhere here. Um, got it all clamped. Okay, maybe three more, just in case. But you really wanna take your time. The more time you take, right here, the better this thing is gonna turn out, trust me. You don't wanna be cutting any corners at this stage of the build. Um, Cause once you zip this thing together, it's gonna to stay together for a very, very long time. Get our straight stick out. See if we're getting anywhere close to flat. Whoa! Alright, this thing is super flat. Check this out. There we go. There is no wobble in this thing. It is straight as it gets. Let's check it the other way here. Same story, guys. So I think we might be onto something. Looks like you can totally plasma cut all of these table files, guys. So uh, these are up for sale on the website. Go and check them out. And uh, you can cut them on your own plasma and have 
pretty much the cheapest version of one of these tables that exists right now. I'm going to keep uh, welding this sucker out and uh, lock everything in because I'm pretty happy with it. Once you have everything clamped together, you can go ahead and weld inside of each one of these slots. Um, I'm going to just do the center first and then I'll leave the perimeter for last because I like to check those with a, a square on each one before I weld it up. That way if I need to peel it in or out, I can get everything perfectly in line before I nail it down. So just going to get this central grid right here. Battery just died on my light. Oh no! Okay. I don't know if you guys believe me, but this is like perfect. <laughs> so I'm just gonna nail this. I can live with that. So this is it guys, if flatness is what you're after, you can totally plasma cut this file guys. It is just as flat as the laser one underneath it. I mean look at that, not a hair. It's perfect. So there you go guys, plasma cut away. So. I got a little hasty here, can see a little crack of daylight, but I really don't think that's the file, I think that's just me being in a rush. Come down here, no daylight. Check this corner here. Check this corner here. Nothing. So if anything, probably need to check this. Really could have probably dressed up this gap a little bit better. Oh, and this is where a little bit of the sloppiness of the plasma comes in. This is hanging down, so I really should have clamped this whole thing top to bottom here, because there's just a little extra play here in the, in the slot. But let's see if it messes with our flatness here on the corner. And as far as the level goes, we got lucky because this plate over here, this edge was at the right elevation. So it carried our straight line. Pretty impressive guys. Same thing here, I got one side a little bit further down than the other, 
but this was picked up. So you can use the 5 8 clamps or I have a ton of these R11 quick clamps and I did not want to throw them away so I made these little pass throughs on the side so you can use your regular old R11s all the way around the perimeter. So you don't necessarily need to have any special tooling. Went and bought a bunch of cheap Hobo Freight clamps and uh, just welded them to some 5 8 all thread. I found out the all thread is a little undersized so I'm going to replace these with uh, 5 8 bolts that have a shank on them that's not threaded because it's just a little bit closer to a true 5 8 and they fit in here with a little less flop. But all these clamps are just regular old off the shelf. You know, here's an F style clamp we cut down. Some vice grip clamps with the rubber feet in case we don't want to mark something up. These are just some regular old wood clamps. We did the same treatment too. And all these will work in that fixture block as well.